Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Idelisib is a very important treatment option for patients with follicular lymphoma. We see responses with follicular lymphoma, but unfortunately they're not as durable as what we see in our CLL patients. So the question becomes, how do we improve the response duration in our follicular lymphoma patients? Combining idelisib with bendamustine plus rituxan really does achieve that by really dramatically reducing the tumor burden and very effectively and hopefully maintaining the remissions as patients can then remain on the idelisib long term. Very important to watch for additional toxicities because of the, the bendamustine and idelisib may have an interaction increasing the risk of rash and diarrhea. We're just now starting to see data with a brute nib in follicular lymphoma. There was a study presented last year uh, in which the response rate was only 28 percent, certainly not exciting, but what we're finding out is that there may be a dose response effect. So higher doses may get you a higher response rate. Uh, we're combining a brutinib with other drugs in the treatment of follicular lymphoma, and that's probably where the future for this drug lies. For example, at this meeting, uh, we're presenting data with a brutinib in combination with rituximab and lenalidomide, so-called R-squared regimen. It's been combined with bendamustine. It's being combined with uh, CD20 antibodies. Uh, I think it really has the potential to make a mark in follicular lymphoma, but where we are now is we have several drugs. We have idelalisib, we have abrutinib on the market, idelalisib being approved for follicular lymphoma, abrutinib not yet, but the question is who is the patient most likely to benefit from one versus the other? We need to have biomarkers that will help us predict, instead, these drugs are very expensive predict which patient not only may respond to it, but may not respond to the other drug. It is, uh, it's a double-edged sword here. We have fabulous drugs. We don't know how to use them yet, and they really are god-awful expensive. Yes, the companies have plans for patients uh, to help them with their finances, but they are very expensive. Having said that, um, very exciting. We're still learning where to put it in uh, it's being combined with lots of drugs. In looking at ways to treat our patients very effectively and with limited toxicities, adding lenalidomide to rituximab is one method for maybe achieving that goal. We recently published our data for lenalidomide and rituximab in mantle cell lymphoma, and there have been many studies looking at lenalidomide and rituxan and follicular lymphoma. And it really seems to be a way to increase the efficacy of the rituximab and hopefully improve the duration of the response and really allow the effects to be much more long-lasting. We are in a very exciting time in the treatment of patients with follicular lymphoma. We are poised to get rid of nonspecific cytotoxic chemotherapy and move on to targeted agents. For example, a regimen we developed over a decade ago called R-squared, rituximab and lenalidomide or Revlimid, in two studies now, a CLGB study or Alliance and Nathan Fowler study from MD Anderson, response rates of over 90% in untreated follicular lymphoma with over 80% complete remissions. Fabulous results, no chemotherapy. And now we can envision the follicular lymphoma situation as three compartments. We have the cell surface. We have monoclonal antibodies that target the cell surface and we get new monoclonal antibodies that are targeting different receptors. We have pathways within the cell, some of these downstream from the B-cell receptor, the PI3K pathway, the BTK pathway, the SICK pathway, as well as the apoptotic pathways, particularly that one which goes through BCL2, and we have inhibitors of BCL2. We have inhibitors of all these pathways. And there's also the microenvironment, the milieu in which the cells live. And there are drugs that target the microenvironment. There's lenalidomide, and there are the checkpoint inhibitors. And if we can find an intelligent way to put these together, 
I think we stand a chance of eventually curing patients with follicular lymphoma in the absence of any chemotherapy.